This video is the first in a series of videos that will describe the operation of the GFC 600 Digital Autopilot. In these videos, we'll show the original GMC 605 Mo controller, which is familiar to many pilots, along with a focus on the recently introduced GMC 605C. The GMC 605C introduces color enunciations to the mode controller associated with the GFC 600 automatic flight control system, enabling enhanced awareness of system status. In this video, we'll describe the design philosophy of this new mode controller and describe the color-coded enunciations that are part of the system. You'll also see how these enunciations would appear on the original GMC 605. Anytime we review Garmin automation devices, we like to introduce the Garmin Automated Flight Path Management philosophy. The graphic shown here illustrates this process, where we develop an accurate mental model of our current aircraft state, use of monitoring skills to determine the need for any changes, and to maintain mode awareness, and then choose the appropriate level of automation, which could be to hand fly, use the flight director only, or to engage the autopilot. We then ensure selection of appropriate modes for the task at hand, and verify that those modes have been activated or armed. The process of check, set, and verify is a continual loop process that helps to ensure safe and efficient flight. To effectively manage automation, first, you should use the appropriate level of automation for the task to be performed. The levels include no automation at all, limited automation use, such as flight director only, and engagement of the autopilot. The AFCS is a workload reduction tool, but is not a replacement for a well-trained pilot. Pilots should always be ready to hand-fly the aircraft. Second, if automation has been engaged, always ensure to use the appropriate mode of automation for the task. This starts at takeoff and continues throughout the flight. Selected modes, such as heading, vertical speed, and IAS modes, require the pilot to manually adjust the system. Nav mode follows routing that is programmed into the system. Selection of an inappropriate mode is likely to lead to undesired results. Third, and equally important, always be aware of the autopilot status. Always verify that your selected mode has been activated or armed. Anticipate the autopilot's next move, and if the system doesn't respond as you expect, disconnect the automation and hand fly the aircraft. Basic steps to take when using the system are to check the current status of the system before making changes. Set your desired references. This includes entering a flight plan and verifying it, as well as setting heading, altitude, and speed targets. Select appropriate modes, such as nav, heading, vertical speed, or IAS. Set your desired rate, such as airspeed or rate of climb or descent. And always verify system status by observing the AFCS status box. Nearly every Automatic Flight Control System, or AFCS, status box indication on Garmin systems shows you lateral mode selections on the left side, activation status in the center, and vertical mode selections on the right side. The GMC-605C incorporates this logic to best align with Garmin's other systems. In addition, the colors used for enunciation have been aligned with other Garmin systems. Green is used to depict active modes. White is used for armed modes. Yellow is used for mode drops and caution alerts. And red is used for abnormal disconnects and warning alerts. Gray is used for advisory messages. Users of our original GMC-605 mode controller will notice that the keys and down-up wheel are located in similar positions, but that the LEDs associated with system activation status are not present on the GMC-605C. That's because activation status enunciations have been moved to the center of the display area on the GMC-605C. When selecting the AP key prior to selecting any mode keys, you will see that the default lateral mode of roll and the default vertical mode of pitch become active, as indicated by the green text. You will also see a green AP appear in the center of the display. If you have a yaw damper installed, you will also see a green YD appear next to the AP enunciation. The FD key can be pressed by itself if you want flight director guidance while hand flying. Again, if you press this key prior to selecting modes, you will see ROL and PIT appear in green in their respective fields. With a yaw damper installed, you have the option of engaging that without selecting to engage the autopilot or to display the flight director. The YD enunciation would then appear in the center section of the display. 
just make sure you disengage the yaw damper before takeoff and prior to landing. At the bottom of the mode controller, you'll see seven keys. The first four keys are for selecting lateral modes of operation, and the remaining three are for selecting vertical modes. Each of these keys acts like a toggle switch. One press will select the mode, and the second press will deselect the mode. Be sure to only press these buttons one time when attempting to arm or engage that mode. The three keys on the bottom right of the mode controller are used for managing vertical modes. The VNAV key is pressed to arm capture of a vertical path for descent to an altitude reflected in the flight plan. The IAS key is selected to engage indicated airspeed mode, which is most often used for climbs. When pressed, the current indicated airspeed is captured. To change this airspeed, you would need to rotate the down-up wheel. Note that on certain high-performance aircraft, you'll find the IAS button replaced with one labeled FLC, which stands for Flight Level Change. This mode is typically used for climbs as well, but unlike IAS mode, FLC mode requires a selected altitude target above or below your current altitude. FLC mode captures the current indicated airspeed or Mach number when pressed. To change this reference speed, you would need to rotate the down-up wheel. The VS key is selected to engage vertical speed mode, and when pressed will capture the current vertical speed. You would then rotate the down-up wheel to select your desired vertical speed. This mode is normally used for descents. The ALT key can be selected to capture the current altitude, and the down-up wheel can be used to adjust the captured altitude in 10-foot increments, up to 200 feet in either direction. The key with the blue outline is the level button. This button is there to provide for recovery from unusual attitudes when disoriented. Pressing it engages the autopilot, levels the wings, and establishes a vertical speed of zero. If you were to experience a system abnormal, such as a yaw trim failure, you would see a caution message appear in yellow. If an emergency level system failure were to occur, such as an autopilot failure, the enunciation would appear in red. You would see a red message appear, and you would hear a continuous AP disconnect alert until the AP disconnect button is pressed. Advisory messages are displayed at the bottom of the display. These messages are provided to aid you in managing the system. This video is the first in a series that covers operation of the GFC-600 automatic flight control system. In this video, we introduce the GMC-605C mode controller. This controller represents a significant improvement over the original GMC-600 mode controller. By bringing the operation and enunciations into line with the majority of other Garmin products, we achieve a level of standardization that has the potential to enhance the safety of your flight operations. Be sure to view the other videos in this series to learn more about operating this highly capable system.